Good evening, I'm Ben Kitili coming to you live from the KTN News Center. This is the KTN Online News Update. Our three opposition members of parliament have been suspended from the National Assembly sittings over the chaos that took place on the last day of parliament session in December last year. Now, as KTN's Najma Ismail now reports, the Coalition for Reforms and Democracy Court has reacted angrily to the suspension of their members, saying that at least five Jubilee MPs should also have been suspended over the said mayhem. The National Assembly has suspended three MPs from the Coalition for Reforms and Democracy Court for four days over the chaos during the last sitting of Parliament in December last year, during which the Security Laws Amendment Bill was acrimoniously passed. <laughs> Suba MP John Badi, Homabe Women Rep Gladys Wanga and Shinyalu MP Silva Sanami will not attend house sittings for four days due to what the Speaker Justin Muturi termed as misconduct. However, court leaders have not taken the matter lightly and have asked the Speaker to also punish five Jubilee legislators who are allegedly also involved in the melee. That one must be implemented. They will be thrown out. The court leaders wanted Gatundu South MPs Moses Kuria, Chuka Igambangombe MP Modoni Njuki, Njoro MP Joseph Kuna, Bahati legislator Kimani Kunjiri, and Chesume MP Elijah Lagat and Thika Town MP Alice Nganga to also face disciplinary action. Last year, the National Assembly passed the Security Laws Amendment Bill amid chaos as MPs from court fought to physically disrupt the process while their counterparts from Jubilee forced the proceedings forward. The High Court later handed court a small victory by suspending parts of the act. Najma Ismail, KTN. Away from Parliament, the University of Eldoret was today turned into a battlefield as students and police clashed during protests. For students at the university took to the streets of alleged corruption in the institution. Now the protest, however, turned ugly after police allegedly fired live bullets in the air in an attempt to disperse the students, injuring the Wasangishu senator in the process. 11 a.m. in Chepkoilel, and these were the scenes. Improvised weapons scattered across an otherwise busy road. A police unit on high alert and embers of what was intended to be a peaceful demonstration by students at Eldoret University. The students took to the streets alleging corruption by the university's leadership, and the police were having none of it. Sisi tulikuwa tumeomba security, watupatia security tufanya peaceful demonstration. Lakini yoi imekuwa kando. Meli would later show us this cartridge as evidence of what he says was excessive force by the police. Police who allegedly stormed the university as soon as they got wind of the protest at 6 a.m. Maskari wakakuja na tia gas, wakafungua dirisha. Mali karibu tulikuwa kwa diri, tulikuwa kwa ndani ya gari ya serikali. Kafungua na wakarusha tia gas ndani. Na kututua moja moja wakitugonga. Mi nilipigwa teke na nikapigwa mgu na mi nikona mzigo. This is the second protest by the students who just last week on Friday were on these same streets protesting the same issues. The vice chancellor of the university, Teresa Agenga, was curiously out of sight and unreachable on phone despite the chaos. <laughs> An absence that further angered the students who say this is not the last of their protests. Edith Kimani, KTN. Now, many of us have dreams of making something of ourselves. How many people actually pursue that dream to its fruition is a different matter altogether. Here's a story of one man whose dream of making a plane has burned in him since childhood. From the toy planes that he used to make during his childhood, Gabriel Nerito has now constructed a drone-like object that he drove to Kien in Tetu to, te to test its efficiency. KTN's Karunderi now has that story. Gabriel Nderito, aged 47, regards himself as a burden aeroplane maker. His dreams are valid, he says. If this drone-like object is anything to go by, then Nderito is seemingly on the right track. What started out as just a metal contraption is now a drone in the making. Even if I will do not succeed, somebody somewhere else in Kenya will probably complete this work and he will not start where I started. 
The power of the engine, an indicator of the milestones he has achieved since the journey began in his garage at Kahawa West area. It is a, a hobby and it was a long term interest since childhood. He has come to test his machine in Kiawara in Kenya constituency, an area that offers large tracts of land ideal for his mission, that of testing the palatability of his creation. Villagers throng the object in awe, evening chores forgotten. The father of two did not pursue a degree in aeronautical engineering as he would have loved to. He, however, did not veer off too far as he has a Bachelor of Science in Physics degree. His darling with planes began when he was a small boy as he would make his own using anything he laid his hands on. Pieces of metal, plastic, sticks, you name it. Even if I do not succeed, somebody somewhere else in Kenya will probably complete this work and he will not start where I started. It takes him roughly 15 minutes to assemble the remote-controlled drone. A friend of his has promised to donate an engine worth 600,000 shillings, a donation which he believes will kickstart him to making a real claim. He has named his creation Upendo, a 130-kilogram affair down from the 500-kilogram object it once was. For those who dismiss him as a joker, Derito has one thing to say to them. Watch this space he says. And with the now famous quote that is attributed to the Oscars winner Lupita Nyong'o, dreams are valid. Mine and yours. Carol Derry, KTN, Nyeri. Good stuff there from Gabriel. Now, court leader Raila Odinga wants governors and members of county assemblies subjected to performance contracting in order to stop incessant wrangles in the counties. Raila also accused county governments of wasting a lot of resources meant for development on foreign trips and emoluments at the expense of development. It ends Patrick Amimo now reports. Court leader Raila Odinga was at Orange House to receive a report of the task force appointed by ODM to inquire into disruption of business at the county assembly of Kisumu. Raila says constant wrangling is a threat to devolution and it's time leaders at county government level signed performance contracts. If that is created, then there will be competition. Then instead of governors and MCAs competing for power, competing for resources and so on, they will be competing to deliver. Raila accused members of county assemblies of wasting public funds on unnecessary foreign trips, entertainment and salaries at the expense of development. If you know, look at what we are now spending in the county assemblies compared to the county councils that we used to have, it's a lot of money going into private people's pockets instead of going to development. The national government has failed to rein in these county governments. Don't have unnecessary meetings at the committee meetings that the council they have what, eight committee meetings in a week just for the purpose of earning allowances. The report on Kisumu County indicates that the relationship between the county assembly of Kisumu and the county executive is characterized by mutual suspicion, hostility, non-cooperation and backstabbing. The task force says Kisumu County Service Board has encouraged a practice where goods and services are procured either from its own membership or farms where its members have financial interest or from MCS that are politically aligned to its members. The task force argues that the creation of county assembly service boards was a necessary bureaucratic baggage and additional cost to the taxpayer since the county public service boards could discharge their functions. They could do these functions without duplicating parliamentary service commission in the assemblies. We therefore recommend that ODM as a party should take an amendment bill to parliament to amend the county assemblies, uh, the, the, the county government act of 2012 so as to abolish county assemblies service boards. Raila says the party will ensure counties under code control fully implement the code manifesto. Patrick Amimo, KTN. Let's stay in Kisumu now and in reaction to the ODM task force report, a section of residents in Kisumu have expressed the disappointment in the manner in which their governor, Jack Ranguma, is running the county's development agenda. Victor Ogale has that story. The issue of 1% uh, allocation of the budget going to development, is a, it's not a very good issue to hear. 
For the better part of Wednesday, the term 1% was the talk of Kisumu County. The full report is here. The report on the Kisumu County Assembly that showed that Kisumu County government has only channeled 1% towards the development of the county has not sat well with the people here. When the report suggested how Mrs. Zadul's uh, situation should be handled. That's why I've called for a truce as we seek to find uh, a, a better way forward for all the parties, not just Mrs. Zadul, for everybody who is involved in this matter. Kisumu County seems to be lagging behind in implementation of development programs. And that report, in my view, is factual, but is a wake-up call for the county government of Kisumu to change the way they do their business. Our overhead costs are too high. We are not collecting enough revenue, and we are not putting a lot of emphasis on development programs for the county. Barabara Nimbaya, because juzi to my own accident, imefanyikana pale karibu na migosi na ilitokana na sababu ya bumps ilibidi wananchi waliingilia saa hiyo na kutengeneza bump eh sasa arekebishe upande wa barabara governor jack rangoma and deputy governor ruth odinga have been embroiled in a tug of war over the management of the county an issue that has since drawn in over 10 members of the county assembly ironically residents in kisumu county seem to be in agreement with the report the report further accused the MCAs of being part of a ring where some control the procurement and tenders being awarded with their kinsmen as beneficiaries. This ranged from rampant corruption in procurement, bribery of MCAs to undermine the speaker, nepotism, incompetence, and infighting. The County Assembly Board had encouraged a practice where goods and services were procured either from its own membership or farms where its members had uh, peculiarity interests or from MCS that are politically aligned to its members. The residents say they are stuck with the wrangling county management team while lack of proper road infrastructure, lack of a proper drainage and sewage system continue to slow down the Lakeside County. Victor Ogale, KTN, in the county of Kisumu. Other Information Communication Technology Association of Kenya has accused the Communications Authority of Kenya, CA, of using militarized approach in effecting the digital migration. But the association says it is unfortunate that rather than provide leadership to resolve this embarrassing statement emanating from policy failure at the ministry level, the ICT Cabinet Secretary, Dr. Fred Matiangi, has resorted to chest thumping and ant antagonistic responses. The, sec the organization Secretary General Kamodo Njenga now joins us live from our city center studios. Now, Mr. Njenga, what would you describe, how would you describe the approach by the Communications Authority of Kenya as well as the ministry? It seems that we are having some technical difficulties uh, trying to reach the Secretary General of the Information Communications Technology Association of Kenya. We are trying to, uh, uh, to connect to him to try and talk to him and uh, shed some more light on these uh, issues. Now, a report released by the Institute for Security Studies has indicated that close to 18 million Kenyans live in extreme poverty. This comes as Kenya is named as one of the best performing African nations, but most of the wealth generated does not benefit the poor. The report further faults the education sector as well as infrastructure, which is are said to have focused on the urban elite rather than the rural f poor. But in the longer term, you have to invest in education, particularly female education. You have to invest in infrastructure. You have to uh, invest in social in, uh, in, ec inclusion, which comes together in what we refer to as a package of pro-poor growth. Pro-poor growth means you try and take the poorest people with you. It's very difficult to do, and it requires clear leadership uh, and, and an ethical administration. 
All roads in Nyeri County led to Karunaini in Tetu for the 57th commemoration of the death of Field Marshal Dead and Kimathi Mukami Kimathi. Kimathi's widow said phase two of the Mau Mau compensation, which was, was on course and asked for war veterans to await the conclusion of the case. Ketian Skarunderi was at the event in Tetu constituency and our reports. Many gathered here at Karunaini, Tetu, Nyeri County for the commemoration of the death of Field Marshal Dedan Kimathi Washiri. This is where he was shot and captured by an African soldier working for the British colonial government who was later executed on a day like this, the 18th of February, 57 years ago. Since then, an annual commemoration has been held right here around this plaque that was erected in his honor just a few years ago. His wife, Mokami Kimathi, arrived with her daughter, Wanjogo Kimathi. Mokami looked frail and had to be aided to the commemoration site. But her speech reverberated with strong sentiments, urging the government to take Mau Mau matters more seriously. <laughs> Ito ekale komi ya kuchega pale ya makubucho ya dede ni kimadi na waze walikona. They have in the past requested for 10 acres to preserve this rich history by building a hotel, a library and a museum. Tutikuruta wira ha. Si unatosha. Si wabu hata hakuna mutu hata moja wetu anaitu hapa. Arudise asadi. Come next year. We are saying... We are not going to, be, to plant trees if there will be no something that has been done in this field. Others from the area who spoke to Katie and lamented about what they perceived as a lax attitude from the government in recognizing and caring for those who are part of Kenya's freedom struggle. We are in the process of establishing the national and the county heroes councils, which will identify who is a hero and recommend methods of awarding them. After the first batch of Mau Mau war veterans were compensated by the British government, another 8,000 sought compensation in a fresh bid to sue the British government, an exercise that was spearheaded by Mokami and is said to be still on course. But we are confident that we are going to get proper compensation for those people who haven't already been compensated. For a long time, the Mau Mau heroes have complained of neglect from the government they say would not have been in existence had they not waged a war to kick out the British. Carol Derry, KTN Karunaini, Nyeri County. Catholics today marked Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent, the 40 days period for fasting that will conclude on the, the Easter celebration. The period is expected to see the Catholics committed in prayer, fasting, and helping the needy. Bishop David Kamau of the Holy Family Basilica today led the Catholic faithful in marking the beginning of the season. President Uhuru Kenyatta today commissioned the launch of the newly renovated wards at the Mathari National Referral and Teaching Hospital, handed over by Safaricom as its second and final Kenya at 50 legacy project. President Kenyatta said the legacy project was about improving facilities and services at the institution which will offer services to more Kenyans. The president said 38 billion Kenya shillings has been invested to ensure that two hospitals in at least every county are able to provide quality diagnostic and treatment services. Mental health is a phenomenon that has taken generations of our societies to understand, let alone treat. As a result, many Kenyans go without much needed attention and suffer due to mental illness. Stigma arising from poor information and backward attitudes have further marginalized mental health patients, alienating them from the national treatment framework. 
crossing borders. Just a day before a final meeting in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, that could lead to a comprehensive agreement to end the crisis in South Sudan, the rebel leader spokesman, General Lul Ruai, now says he has broken ranks with the rebel group. Lul now accuses Dr. Riek Machar of personalizing the liberation efforts. Timothy Otieno reports. The former spokesperson for the SPLM rebel group has claimed that the ongoing talks between Dr. Riek Machar and President Salva Kiir could end in disarray. The man who has all along acted as the spokesperson for Dr. Riek Machar's side is now accusing Machar of pushing his own personal agenda in the talks. As of today, Wednesday, 18 February 2015, declare to break away from SPLM, SPLA, under the leadership of Dr. Riek Machar. We have decided to form our own movement, which shall be called South Sudan Resistance Movement, South Sudan Resistance Army, that would work with peace-loving people of Sudan, region, and the international community in order to expedite the stalled peace process and bring an end to the suffering of the people. The apparent split in the opposition is one that has been welcomed by the South Sudan government representative in Kenya. We appreciate the, the move that he has taken. We have no problem with that, uh, provided that he comes and continue a meaningful dialogue with the government. The government has all the time repeatedly saying the doors and the windows of peace in South Sudan remain open. The two rival factions of SPLM, through Kir and Mashar, last month signed a roadmap agreement that could possibly see Riek Mashar reinstated as vice president in a transitional government. I want to assure you that I and my part, the party I am leading, and the army that I am leading, will implement this agreement without any Fail. This conflict must be ended peacefully. I hope the other side will also be serious on this matter. The two groups have signed a series of peace deals with the latest one set for tomorrow in Addis Ababa. But the former South Sudan's rebel military spokesman says his group will not recognize any agreement made during those talks. I'm not going and the, groups, the, the, the group that we are representing will not abide by anything that is going to be reached in Addis. The South Sudan nation has faced turmoil since December 2013 with fights between Kir's troops and those loyal to Mashar leading to more than 10,000 deaths and millions left homeless. Let's now go to the ongoing impasse in the digital TV migration process. Now, in the, the Information Communication Technology Association of Kenya has accused the Communications Authority of Kenya of using militarized approach in effecting the digital migration. The association says it is unfortunate that rather than provide leadership to resolve this embarrassing stalemate emanating from policy failure at the ministry level, the ICT Cabinet Secretary, Dr. Fred Matiangi, has resorted to chest thumping and antagonistic responses. Let's now bring in the Association Secretary General, Akamodo Njenga. Mr. Njenga, how would you describe the approach taken by the ICT Cabinet Secretary as well as the Communications Authority of Kenya? The approach uh, that has been taken, uh, if I were to describe it, I would say it is very wanting. And uh, for the record, it is important that I emphasize that the digital migration exercise is of great importance to us as a country. The results of its successful implementation are about to yield a lot of dividends in terms of freeing of spectrum, in terms of uh, better uh, signal, better clarity, better sound uh, definition. But for us to get to the proper destination, the approach that ought to be used is one that is uh, fairly inclusive and especially towards this particular statement where there has been a dispute which has really consumed a, a lot of time between the policy makers of the ministry, the 
regulator, the CAK, and the three lead media uh, uh, houses. Mr. Njanga, you point to a uh, policy failure at the ministry level. Uh, from where you stand, where did the rain start beating us? The rain started beating us when we blood at the point of a, a frequency allocation to an extent that we granted more frequencies to foreign entities than what was left for a local uh, utility. And uh, it is uh, worth uh, noting that uh, spectrum is a, is a natural resource. Just like we have uh, forest, we have wildlife, it is a resource that we ought to, we, we ought to hold uh, and uh, utilize uh, very cautiously. And therefore, the minute we do not plan for spectrum right from the start, and then have a large chunk of that going to foreign entities, and when our very own entities which have been in the sector for, uh, uh, for quite a while are left to scavenge for the remnant uh, frequencies, I don't think uh, it is uh, fair to uh, us uh, or to our national interest. Okay, Mr. Njanga, there, there are some Kenyans who are not supporting the media houses. They are saying that you know, the media houses should have acted earlier. Uh, do you support that claim? They have, there has been a lot of interaction between the media and the, the ministry. You, you, you may want to recall that the, this process has been under the uh, stewardship of the Digital Television Committee where the government uh, is the majority because it consists of the ministry, the CAK, the National Communication Secretary representative, and also the various uh, representatives from the pay TV vendors. Uh, so that uh, team that has been steering the process has in a way been, been skewed against the local media industry because of interests which uh, are uh, obvious. So that uh, has meant that uh, the local broadcasters have been negotiating from a very uh, weak uh, uh, beginning point. And if you look at uh, the reaction, even today, if you consider what happened last week, immediately after the judgment, uh, the Supreme Court judgment on Friday, the next thing that is happening on Saturday is a raid and, and, and uh, vandalizing of the transmission stations of these three leading uh, broadcasters at Remulu, uh, where you find unnecessary uh, force being used. Because if you are going to excel in this uh, migration process, we must uh, bring everybody on board. We must help even uh, the people who are being affected, the viewers, to understand why exactly do we need to have uh, this switch? Why do we need to move from the current mode of uh, transmission, which is analog, to the digital? We All need right. to... All right, yes. so um, th th there is uh, an issue that has been uh, the, 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 the basis of a lot of discussion, especially via social media, and that is a must-carry rule for the free-to-air channels. Very quickly, what does that mean? What, what does it say? What, is, what, what should Kenyans expect? That uh, was a requirement. The mass car carry rule was uh, a requirement that was imposed on the, the signal uh, carriers, the, 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 the broadcast signal distributors, which places upon them a requirement that they must uh, carry uh, signals from all free to air. Uh, uh, stations. So stations like uh, uh, KTN, which uh, do not charge uh, for their uh, content, it was a requirement. But now, the question that arises is if a requirement is imposed on you that you must carry certain goods alongside yours, then you also have an obligation 
to negotiate with the owner of the goods. Otherwise, you cannot just uh, come and uh, uh, snatch somebody's content, and then simply because you are required to uh, transmit it alongside the other content that you carry, you pay no regard or no attention to the owner of that content. And I think uh, that would be improper because... All right, Mr. Njenga. Um, so now, where, where do we go from here? Where um, the Ministry of ICT and <coughs> the Communications Authority of Kenya has their hotline stands and the media houses are saying they will not budge. So where do Kenyans go from here? Ultimately, we'll have to think of a workable solution. Just dumping, like uh, we observed earlier, will help nobody. Because if uh, you are in charge of a docket, you hold that docket in trust for the Kenyan people, and you must ensure that their interests are prioritized. So the starting point would be to, ha would be to have the parties to the dispute come together on a common table. And that, uh, that, that, that is partly what the Supreme Court uh, judgment would have anticipated. That once the judgment has been given, you take time as the litigating parties to isolate the issues that uh, have not been, uh, or, 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 or where there, has, there have been uh, differences uh, in terms of perspectives, and then on that basis, you sit down, and with respect to the uh, judgment of the court, you see how best to move forward. Otherwise, right. if, if uh, the, the, the ministry and the CAK resort to the military approach, whereby they say that this has to be done, we know, of course, for you to switch from one mode of uh, transmission to another, you need to uh, change the infrastructure. You need to bring in some new components, and that cannot be done overnight. I do not understand how they expected that by uh, Saturday, after the ruling on Friday, that by Saturday, the media stations uh, that uh, had uh, canvassed the matter in court would have been in a position to procure all that is needed to set up the new model all right, of all uh, right. transmission. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your insights. Kamodhan Janga, the Secretary General of the Information Communication Technology Association of Kenya, shedding some more light on the ongoing impasse between the media owners and the Communications Authority of Kenya and the ICT uh, Ministry. Now, thank you for staying with us. This is a KTN online news update. You can stream live on www.ktnkenya.org. TV. Let's now take a look at what's happening in the world of business. Kenya Power has announced plans to connect 1 million customers during its 2014-2015 financial year. Uh, the move comes as power generation in the country is on the rise, with the power distributor keen to ensure power supply is adequately taken up. Increased distribution is likely to drive up the company's profitability, which stood at 4.1 billion shillings in the first six months. Ketian's Michael Karanja, the details. In 2013, the government set out a target to increase Kenya's power generation capacity by 5,000 megawatts in 40 months. That move was lauded as a positive step not only to lower power costs, but also increase the number of people with access to electricity. Demand from electricity from farms and homes outstrips the installed generation capacity, which stands at 1,870 megawatts, and that frequently leads to blackouts that disrupt businesses and forces them to spend extra funds to install and run generators. The move by Kenya Power to add a million customers in the next six months is expected to meet rising power generation. Just this week, Kenya, the country's largest power producer, is expected to add 280 megawatts to the national grid. Kenya Power currently has an estimated 2.1 million customers. The news comes as the company posted a 53% rise in first half profit, helped by higher sales and tariffs. Net profit during the six-month period stood at 4.1 billion shillings, up from 3 billion shillings a year earlier. Kenya Power's total revenue stood at 57 billion shillings with newer connections expected to boost earnings. During the period, the firm's power purchase costs rose to 20 billion shillings, up from 13.7 billion shillings a year earlier, driven by an increase in energy charges and additional generation capacity. Kenya Power is currently upgrading its systems to minimize outages, and during the half-year period, 
upgrade cost rose to 10.5 billion shillings. To secure revenue, Kenya Power plans to introduce smart metering systems to enhance billing accuracy for larger power customers as well as reduce overall costs. The board has recommended an interim dividend of 20 cents per ordinary share set to be paid by the 29th of May. Michael Karanja, KTN Business. Well, the IFMIS Department of the National Treasury has developed an electronic system that will monitor how all ministries and state agencies spend funds on a real-time basis in a bid to improve the monitoring of budget implementation. Now, the IFMIS Business Intelligence Dashboard set for launch in March this year will give cabinet secretaries access to real-time summary of the expenditure made by all state agencies and enable measuring of budget performance against work plans. The tool that will significantly improve public funds management in Kenya will also, cas will also be cascaded to the counties, giving governors and county governments an efficient way to monitor use of county funds. The system will give access to a breakdown of expenditure within departments and ministries with an interactive visual presentation. The data which can be interrogated through the dashboard includes procurement and payment. The dashboard enables accurate tracing of funds as well as ceiling leakages. Now the news that Retirement Benefits Authority, RBI, has called on small and individual pension schemes to join or form umbrella bodies for efficient management. Formation of these bodies is expected to ensure economies of scale, guaranteeing better returns to both employers and employees. The pension industry regulator has so far registered 16 umbrella bodies in what he says is a milestone towards increasing savings from a current 800 billion shillings to 1 trillion shillings in two years. RBA is pushing for small and medium enterprises to join pension schemes as a way to inculcate a savings culture among employees in the SME sector. The informal sector employs more than 80% of the Kenyan workers, and that despite the sector being a major employer, less than 1% of participants are saving for retirement. By allowing small and medium businesses, which may not find it financially viable to establish their own benefit scheme to pool their resources, umbrella retirement funds provide a simple cost-effective vehicle for employers retirement benefit arrangement. So the idea behind the scheme is to shield SMEs from having to go through the rigor or the weight of registering or forming the, the platform under which a pension scheme needs to be under. And just Courier and logistics firm G4S has unveiled a new automated cash machine in a bid to reduce instances of theft of cash in transit. The new machine dubbed Depositor is expected to see the company bolster its presence as one of the leading cash transfer companies in the country. The new machine will see retailers make deposits in the machine which will be installed at their premises. The Depositor machine has a number of high-end security features which will be critical in securing transactions. Ideally, the machine will help cut down on transaction costs significantly as it allows for seamless transmission of transactions. The firm is banking on the new offering to not only enhance consumer confidence, but as well make it easier for firms to practice better bookkeeping. The initiative comes hot on the heels of increased cases of theft of cash by crew who ferry money on transit. G4S has in the recent past incurred huge losses and cash stolen while on transit. So what I can tell you, it's a very reliable device. It's tough, it's robust, and it's definitely developed for, for Africa. It's actually integrated into their system so much that they use our software to talk to their bookkeeping program. It's integrated, so they have cut down on 50% of their overheads, I'm talking on, the, on the bookkeeping related, just by using one of our devices. So if you've got a large outlet, whether you've got one store, 100 stores, doesn't matter. We can do customization and integration for you. I can do reporting for you in the way that you want it to be done. Thank you for staying with us here on the KTN Online News Updates. Let's now take a look at what's happening in sports, starting with football and the future of Kenyan football leadership lies in the hands of Sports Secretary Hassan Wario. This after Football Kenya Federation, FKF, and the Kenyan Premier League Limited, KPL, failed to agree on the composition of the top-tier league. Kenya is now facing the reality of having a parallel league and a FIFA ban should the government step in to create order. KTN senior sports reporter Hassan Juma with the details.
All eyes are now on the sports cabinet secretary Hassan Wario and the world governing body FIFA following the breakdown of talks between the Kenya Premier League Limited and Football Kenya Federation. The national associations seem to sit ground on most of the issues KPL wanted, including financing the expanded league. However, KPL remained unmoved and chose to defend their contractual agreement with Supersport that does not allow for an expanded league. We, we, have, we, we, have been, we have been saying all that through that we have contractual obligations which we must honor, uh, which uh, the change to an 18 team amounts to breaking or breaching those obligations. The talks that began early on Wednesday continued for the better part of the day with members forming small groups to broker truce. And at the end of it all, the proverbial white smoke did not show signs of appearing. KPL insists that they understand the repercussions of having a parallel league, but it's a road they are prepared to take. You know, we've been running a 16 league team, and uh, we don't know where the, uh, the, the elephant of 18 came from. Mother United and Kenya Premier League member Bob Monroe left the meeting in half, with FKF not budging on the 18 team league. I have full confidence <laughs> in my colleagues and in my chairman to present the KPO viewpoint. FKF will now write a report to the Sports Ministry and the World Governing Body FIFA. One of the recommendations is to expel KPL from their ranks and run the FKF Premier League. They are walked out of, out of FKF, so they are no longer our members. So we will take our own course. We will invoke the FIFA statutes. We will have an FKF Premier League on course. As it is, KPL's league is set to kick off this Saturday. But FKF repeated its warning to referees of dire consequences should they officiate in the Kenya Premier League. Clubs have been given up to Thursday at 10 in the morning to confirm their participation in the FKF league or be replaced from their setup. We are giving some of those clubs up to tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, to confirm their participation. To confirm their participation by 10 o'clock tomorrow on our Premier League. Those ones which do not do it by 10 o'clock tomorrow will be replaced and the league will go on from this weekend, which means we will have new fixtures from this weekend. The Football Kenya Federation League kicked off last weekend with one match. Hassan Juma, KTN Sports. Definitely time running out for KPL and FKF to come to an agreement. Now, 28 athletes will represent Kenya at the 12th edition of the Africa Junior Championships in Addis Ababa by Ethiopia next month. The team was selected after a competitive two-day national trials at the Nyao National Stadium. The Africa Junior Championships will be held from the 4th to the 8th of March. The team named to represent Kenya at the Africa Youth Championships is a mixture of new talent and experience with some familiar faces making the team while some skipped the national trials altogether. World Youth 400 meters bronze medalist Alex Sampao, who is hoping to graduate the 800 meters race later this year, made the team with high hopes of signing off in style at the Africa Youth Championships. Sampao, who was part of the World Release team to Bahamas last year, won the 400 meters race at the trials in a time of 47.1 seconds ahead of Kevin Tanu and Joshua Masikonde. So that one is another advantage of getting that medal because I don't see the challenge, but from South Africa. With Stipuch's sensational Conceslas Kipruto progressing to the senior ranks, his Mosorio training partner Abraham Kibiwot hopes to fit in his shoes. Kibiwot, a fourth finisher at the Africa Youth Games in Nigeria, won the water and barrier race in 8 minutes, 39.7 seconds. And, uh, and I end up make sure I go to race. I'm going to go to race. Africa Youth 3000 meters flat bronze winner Dorcas Nzembi was second in the girls' water and barrel race, hopes to upgrade her podium place in Ethiopia. Well, you are competitive. Again, you are going to win your team. I was bad at the end of the speed work. I was going to win your team. Conspicuously missing from the national trials was world junior champion Margaret Nyerera, who is a Form 4 student at the Tetu Secondary School. Field events once again failed to spark with only one triple jump athlete making the team. Youth and junior teams' performances is always an indication of what the future will look like in any sport. While the team selected here today to represent Kenya at the Africa Junior Championships in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, is expected to do well.
Lin Washira KTN. American Cup quarterfinal bath in Hong Kong in March is the focus of the Kenya Sevens rugby team. Shuja, who beat Samoa to lift the ball trophy in Las Vegas this past weekend, returned home this morning. The Hong Kong Sevens will go down from the 27th to the 29th of March. After an international outing that saw Kenya Sevens team collect a total of 18 points from two legs of the HSBC Wilder Sevens series, the home team arrived back at home Wednesday morning and announced it will use the long break to re-energize ahead of the sixth leg in Hong Kong at the end of March. The side defied the odds to collect 10 points at Wellington with a played semi-finals run, then won the ball finals beating Argentina 24-21 to add eight more points to their total of points tally. A result that sees them stays 12 on the log on 29 points, but with optimism to better their performance. Like whatever it is we do, that we're representing our sponsors, the Kenya Rugby Union, and obviously the country as a whole. And with that, hopefully going forward, we're striving for perfection. We are still going to work hard, trying and to build into our, our strength, and try and work on our weaknesses to, to be able to get Kenya to the best place it can be in the, in the ranking. And with high rise of Kenya Sports Union's embroidery leadership drama, Gabriel Ouko, who stepped into Mwangi's Mudeh showers in December, remain optimistic that the union will sort their issues so as to better the sport. This comes as Kenya Airways reaffirmed that they will remain committed on sponsoring the team. Our sponsorship will continue uh, uh, you know, as long as we know that there's good governance in place. I will promise you one thing. We will sort out our problems as Kenya Rugby Union. We are not going to be associated with other sports like people have been doing the last couple of weeks. So all the problems that we have are going to get sorted out within the next couple of weeks. Kenya has been pulled against the USA, England and Wales for the sixth round in Hong Kong, set for 27th to 29th of March. Moses Wahesi, KTN Sports. All the best to Shuja in Hong Kong in March. That does it for this KTN Online News Update. Remember, you can catch up, catch us live online on www.ktnkenya.tv. Thanks for watching. I'm Ben Kitili. Have a good night.